This is it. As of the making of this video, the All That Reboot has premiered its very first episode. For the first time in almost 15 years, this classic sketch comedy show will be on TV for a brand new generation. Over the past month, we've been introduced to the new cast members Ryan Alessi, Reese Cadell, Kate Godfrey, Gabrielle Green, Nathan Janik, Les Lumpkin, and Chingun Sergilin, performing their own unique skits, as well as classic skits, with all that alumni such as Lori Beth Denberg, Kel Mitchell, and Josh Server. I'm very excited to see these kids take up the mantle and put their own spin into all that, and from what we've seen, it looks really promising. There are a lot of things I personally would love to see in this iteration of all that, so I'm putting a list of the things I hope to see in the future. Number one. I hope that this cast will have amazing chemistry and variety, just like in the original. When you look back on all that, either from the original or from the revival run, the cast seems to get along with each other very well, whether it be on their skits or on the cold opens. Each member needs to have a strength in a particular way that makes them stand out, but also be a complement to the other cast members that makes their performance entertaining. According to an article on Bustle, it lists off the cast members as well as their acting experience. Ryan Alessi and Chingun Sergilin have studied at the Second City Improvisational Comedy Troupe in Chicago. That's very impressive at such a young age. Some of the most famous actors, actresses, and comedians, especially from Saturday Night Live and SCTV, have gotten their training at Second City. So we could expect to see some improv or impressions from them. In contrast, we have Kate Godfrey and Les Lumpkin, who have theater experience, with Kate performing at the Broadway Youth Ensemble and Lex at the Indianapolis Repertory Theater. So we could expect to see them perform original characters or maybe even sing. One of the many praises that all that had received was the diversity of the cast members. Nickelodeon was very well known at the time for casting real kids, meaning that they weren't the stereotypical perfect kid with nice hair, nice teeth, and perfect body shape that shows from Disney would have. The late 80s and 90s also had kid actors from different races and cultures. There were African Americans, Hispanics, and Asians who starred or appeared in many Nickelodeon shows at a time in which it was mostly white. It wasn't at first because they needed to draw on an audience who happened to have owned cable. In Chapter 5 of Slimed, an oral history of Nickelodeon's Golden Age by Matthew Clickstein titled The Diversity, Why Were So Many People on Nickelodeon White, Double Dare co-creator Mike Klinghoffer stated, So here's the non-politically correct answer. The year is 1985. We were trying to reach our audience, which at the time in the cable world of 12 million households was maybe a few million kids upper-class white kids. But that slowly changed during the 80s and early 90s, when Nickelodeon was ranked as the number one kids' network. In the list of how not to think and create with the Nickelodeon attitude in 1990, one of the rules state to not use role models or perfect kids because it would make the real kids feel inadequate and imperfect. That's why the kids in Nickelodeon shows during the 80s and early 90s had unruly hair, braces, acne, or a bit overweight, and were either very tall or very short. It was a massive shakeup at the time, showing that kids who didn't follow the perfect body route could not only become successful, but also role models for the kids tuning in. Flash forward to 2019, and diversity is just as important as ever. We have a lot more TV shows with actors and actresses from different walks of life. For all that, we have our very first Asian cast member. Personally, if the show becomes a huge success, let's take the diversity even further. Let's have cast members, celebrity guests, or guest singers who are in the LGBT community. We've had The Legend of Korra and The Loud House introducing gay couples. So seeing people who are gay, bi, transgender, etc. wouldn't be that big of a shock compared to if they would have done it back in 1994. I know a lot of people are going to hate me on this saying, oh, how dare you, or this will be terrible for the kids, but this is the real world. People like this exist, and we shouldn't hate or ignore it. We should embrace it. We've come a long way on proper representation in movies and TV shows, and we should continue going forwards, not backwards. Number two, the skit should mostly be original and not too heavily borrowed from the previous All That seasons. As we've seen from seasons 9 and 10 of All That, they tried to implement some classic skits such as Good Burger and Vital Information. 
and it was a massive failure. Seeing Ryan Coleman as Ed and little JJ doing vital information was absolutely awful. In the first episode, however, it seems like Reese Caudell is going to be doing vital information with Lori Beth passing the torch, so I'm actually curious to see how well that turns out. As for the original skits, they need to start from scratch and do something very unique that makes it stand out. As of the making of this video, we've had skits that parodied The Masked Singer, Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, and Carpool Karaoke from The Late Late Show with James Corden. Every once in a while, I would love to see a former All That cast member guest appear with the new cast. But for the most part, this version of All That has to be its own thing. Maybe they could even make fun of Nickelodeon itself, from its TV shows to its actors. There was a great skit a few years ago on SNL where Miley Cyrus and Kenan Thompson, playing as Raven Simone, talked about how to act in a Disney Channel sitcom. Disney Channel World, any child is smarter than every adult. Hey, sweetie, you want to see my stamp collection? Oh, gee, can I? I bet they're super cool. The Disney Channel is all about sensory overload. So you want to make sure your clothes are as loud and crazy as you're acting. I'm auditioning for Wizards of Waverly Place. What should I wear? Let me show you this blouse that I want on episode 75. Glasses on. That's so raven. Shut up! Number three, celebrity guests. All that has been known for including celebrities into their skits, either as themselves or for a quick cameo. Season 8 had tried to do something new with including celebrity guests into all that for more than one skit. It was a good idea on paper, but it made it too crammed with a celebrity guest and a singing performance in a 24-minute time slot. If celebrity guests are going to be included in all that, maybe they can stretch it longer to an hour-long time slot. Take advantage of the celebrity guests and either have them do their well-known roles in movies and TV shows or interacting with the cast in their original skits. There is also the possibility of a particular group of celebrities that would be very unique to all that since they didn't exist in the 90s. YouTubers. YouTubers have gotten to be just as famous as celebrities on movies and TV shows with their coverage of video games, movies, TV shows, music, art, cooking, sewing, and many more. If the All That reboot is going to do this, then that would probably draw a lot of kids into watching the show. Liza Koshy was a YouTuber before hosting Double Dare, and she's doing pretty well. One of the All That cast members, Reese Cadell, is a YouTuber herself alongside with her older sisters. There are so many YouTubers that would be great to see in all that. It would definitely bring some variety into the mix. Unfortunately, Nickelodeon hasn't exactly hit any home runs when it comes to bringing YouTubers into their programs. The first one is Lucas Krushenk as Fred Figglehorn appearing in iCarly and having his own movies and TV show, The Fred Show. I know that there was a lot of people who loved Fred when it came out and had grown up with his content, but I didn't care for him at all. If you do, then that's perfectly fine. More power to you. There was also Marvin Marvin, a show that only lasted for one season, receiving mostly negative reviews from critics and viewers. However, Lucas seems to be doing fine on his personal channel with over 3 million subscribers, so good for him. And of course, I must bring up the elephant in the room with Game Shakers and the cameo of Jared Pro Jared Konabibauer, a very well-known member from the former video game website ScrewAttack, covering video game news, and a former video game reviewer with the website Normal Boots. According to his wife, Heidi O'Farrell, Jared was cheating on him with Holly Conrad, Ross O'Donovan's ex-girlfriend, and had started a Tumblr account posting nude photos of himself to minors. Yeah. Then there were the attempts of having YouTube shows into TV shows, such as React to That and Awesomeness TV, all of which completely failed. Which is why I'm questioning on why Nickelodeon is greenlighting Ryan's toy reviews in a Baby Shark TV series. But I'm sure if they can pull it off right, it would be great and a major standout from the previous iterations. Number four, musical guests. Over the years, the type of music would change depending on whatever was popular at the time. In the early 90s, we had hip-hop, R&B, and rap stars such as TLC, The Brat, and LL Cool J. During the late 90s, pop was becoming very popular, with boy bands and girl groups from the Backstreet Boys and the Spice Girls. Then there was alternative rock during the 2000s run of all of that, with Avril Lavigne and Bare Naked Ladies. Now, in 2019, we could get a variety of singers and performers from all types of genres, 
For music from other countries, it used to be that the only way you could listen to music from a singer or a band, it would have to be a really popular song to hit in the Billboard's Top 40 hit, or they would have to go onto an international tour to perform their songs, and it would be popular enough to have cassette tapes or CDs released to the public. But thanks to the internet and streaming sites such as Spotify and Pandora, we can listen to music with ease. SNL recently had the K-pop group BTS in one of their episodes, and it was a massive hidden views. This will bring a new sense of diversity to bring in musicians from different countries to perform their songs and introduce kids to a brand new genre of music that they would ordinarily wouldn't be familiar with, similar to how we were first introduced to hip-hop and R&B in the 90s. At first, I was surprised that the Jonas Brothers were appearing as musical guests on all that when I first heard the announcement. I thought that they had stopped performing years ago when they decided to split up. But I was wrong. Apparently, they had a major comeback recently and are performing again. They even performed in a recent episode of SNL. There are a lot of singers and bands who are making their comebacks recently, such as the Spice Girls with their reunion tour and their upcoming movie. So they could make an appearance in the All That reboot. They did perform in All That during the fourth season of the original run, so why not? It'll come full circle. Also, TLC. For the new kids... They'll get to know who the singers are behind the theme song. I know it won't be the same since the passing of Lisa Left Eye Lopez back in 2002, but they're still going strong as a duo, releasing a comeback album back in 2017. I think that will be great to have them back. There's also independent musicians as well who perform their own original music online. They may not be as well known as the mainstream singers you hear on the radio, but they have just as much of a devoted audience on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, Bandcamp, and more. We were introduced to indie rock and pop music from the adventures of Pete and Pete back in the 90s, so it's not a strange concept when you think about it. Finally, number five. I would personally love to see the show continue to grow and get better if it lasts longer than a season. I will admit that when watching season one of the original All That, it's a bit rough around the edges when compared to the later seasons. The actors were just getting accustomed to their roles, each other, and the writers were figuring out what skits worked and didn't. Personally, I felt it wasn't until season two when the show finally found its footing. The skits were mostly home runs, the cast grew into their characters and had gotten better with their acting chops, and the writing had a great balance of being really clever yet really corny at the same time. I think that they would have a better understanding of what worked and what didn't work, not only because of the views, but because of the clips and episodes being posted online. Thanks to the internet and social media, fans are able to state their opinions on how they feel about an actor or a performance on all that. And I'm sure that that will be great feedback for the writers and producers to put into heart so that they can make the show better. But sometimes that could also be a double-edged sword. Why am I saying this? Because there were so many people who dismissed the show, even before this episode aired. People were already claiming that the show was going to be a failure, or that the reboot was unnecessary because we already had the original, and the new kids were never going to be as good. I love this comment, by the way. It's so hilarious. Some people even say, why reboot all that? Why not create a new sketch comedy show? Well, (laughs) they did twice. The following is an important announcement. Nick did it! Uh, um, who are you? <laughs> I'm Camilla's grandmother. I thought that I'd bake you nice girls some homemade cookies. Come on, here. Now the cookie <laughs> thing is that- And they both failed. But it started to get even more leaning towards the negative side when Drake Bell posted his thoughts on the All That Reboot saying on Instagram, This is literally the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm confused. Is this written or is this their improv? He rhymed joking with the word joking like four times. First off, Drake Bell's career wouldn't have kickstarted without all that since he was one of the main cast members of Drake and Josh, which was a spinoff of The Amanda Show, which was a spinoff of all that. Instead of giving his support to these new kids, he's insulting them by saying that they're not funny. It's even worse when there are comments out there agreeing with him. 
This is not the correct way to critique an opinion on something you don't like. It makes you sound bitter and angry. Now let's compare it to someone who was a former cast member on all that, who was hesitating on the concept of first, but now is approving it. In episode one of A Bag of Chips, Lisa Foyle states on how she felt when she first heard about the All That reboot. You ask me how I feel about it because I do have a lot of feelings actually and I would love to share them. <laughs> Please, this is your forum. So it's, I've actually kind of gone like, I've gone like back and forth. Like at, like the first feeling I had when I heard about it was like, oh, like, oh, like, no, like, don't do that. Like yeah. it was, we had like a Leslie big, well enough alone. Exactly. Like that was such a huge part of my life. We had a huge anniversary special, the 10th, you know, the, the 10th anniversary special where we brought all the past cast members back. And I feel like we really celebrated the show and it's 10 years, wrapped it up in a little package and put it on a shelf. And so when I heard that that present was being taken down and opened and becoming a, a new present, regifting, so I continue this, uh, you know, metaphor. This, metaphor? No. this is bad metaphor. <laughs> I'm really bad at metaphors. You're going to learn that about me very quickly. Um, so if like my very initial thought was like, oh, that's like, why would they do that? And then so quickly, maybe five minutes later, I was like, wait a minute. No, like, this is awesome. This is, this is going to be a whole, you know, a new experience for people who haven't, who didn't get to watch the old show. Like kids now get to, you know, get to watch all that like I did when I was a kid before I ever became an actor I was obsessed with all that it was my favorite show hopefully everybody has that same experience that we did my advice is to give this show a chance watch a few episodes and then come back to it with a fair conclusion once you have a full grasp of what direction the show is going if you like it then that's great introduce it to your younger siblings cousins nieces nephews or your own kids and show them a new version of a show that you yourself grew up with but you have to remember the all that reboot is catering to today's kids this is their all that we already had our version of all that and for the most part it's still entertaining to watch today if you don't like the new reboot then it's okay but please don't ruin it for them saying that it's terrible and they should feel bad for liking it. So remember, don't be a Drake, be a Lisa.